Official Jets podcast is presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. Eric Allen here at One Jets Drive, joined by former Jets quarterback Mark Sanchez. Great to see you, brother. Great to see you as well. Thanks for having me. Jets Buccaneers practice. You took it all in. It was like a family reunion out there. It really was. Uh, Braylon Edwards was here. Had a ton of former players. uh, New Hall of Famer inductee, Joe Klecko. Yep. Was incredible. Um, I thought it's it's so fun to come back and see the camaraderie, the fraternity that that we got a chance to be a part of here and uh, seeing Leon Washington coaching, although he looks like a track coach now. I mean, he's lost so much weight. He's so cut. My man looks like he's wasting away to nothing on me. I want to give him a cheeseburger or something. Um, he looked awesome. And uh, seeing other people from uh, even from the Buccaneers. So uh, Coach Tom Moore, right. who's been around the league forever. Um, he was here with us in 2011, I want to say, uh, as an assistant. And I actually just went out to see him like three weeks ago just to watch some tape and really? pick his brain. And uh, he put me onto some some really good stuff to to watch this coming year. And I really appreciate him and our friendship and our relationship. So it was great to see a myriad of folks. And did you talk to Eric Decker out there? I did talk to Eric Decker. He had a son. That he was looks, a surprise visit. That was a surprise visit. Um, and we had... Um, you know, we had a war of words about who's got the better hair. Yeah. So we'll leave that to the fans. Okay. Uh, you mentioned cheeseburgers. Yeah. Before, as far as Leon Washington is concerned. How many people, Jets fans, bring up Mark Sanchez's hot, hot dogs? Dog. Um, quite a bit. It's yeah. usually around National Hot Dog Day. And it's usually because I don't change. And so... <laughs> Zebra doesn't change his stripes, Eric. That's what I'm telling you. Is <laughs> after games at USC, there'd be uh, at the LA Memorial Coliseum, there'd yep. be, you know, 25 different little hot dog stands on the street, and uh, the nice little Hispanic gals uh, were were cooking up the bacon wrap hot dogs. So that's where they started. They were victory dogs. Okay. Well, the real issue with the hot dog story was. We're going into Oakland. We'd won our first three games. We lost our next three. Right. I was playing like crap, giving the ball away way too much. And I was kind of like, not kind of, I was down in the dumps. And I couldn't eat before the game. I was so in my own head. And it took Rex to get a clip from college, a couple different college clips. And I think he worked with um, Eric Espinosa, our film guy at USC. Right. And he put this highlight tape together to kind of pump me up and remind me like, Hey dude, we drafted you number five for a reason. We never said this was going to be perfect. You're playing just fine. Take care of the ball a little better and go be this guy and showed me the tape. Right. Well, after that I'm re-energized. Boom. We're playing a bad Oakland Raiders team at the time. And it was just what we needed. We beat them 38. I mean, beat the brakes off them. It was like, it was crazy. Revis had a huge interception Mm -hmm. and it just blew the doors open. Right. (laughs) So, I'm so hungry. I didn't eat the night before the morning of the game and I'm dying on the sidelines. So I asked the guys in the white shirts and blue shorts who help, you know, shagging balls and doing everything on the sidelines and water and everything. Hey, do you got any food? And they're like, yeah, we got some Gatorade bars or this, that, and the other. I was like, no, I need some like food. I'm like really not feeling good. And I'm out of the game at this point. (laughs) And he goes, what do you want me to do? Run up and get you a cheeseburger? I said, no, but I'll take a hot dog. (laughs) I said, grab some mustard, you know, on the way out. And that's, basically did you realize cameras was gonna no because they caught it during a timeout i even waited for a timeout and you see i was all down crouched low and then i think it was deerdorf and gumble who called me out right and now i'm in the booth and so i'm like if that's i've thought about this before if that situation ever happens do i say anything like if they show because sometimes the producer will go in your ear during breaks and you're talking to your partner or whatever in the booth And he'll say, hey, we caught this cool clip. Check this out. Right. And it's usually, you know, guys talking smack to each other or a coach pulling it, you know, Pete Carroll pulling in Geno Smith and giving him a pep talk, you know, when the cameras are off, supposedly. Right. When the when the general audience is gone, you get this behind the scenes cut. Well, now I'm like, I don't know. Do I give them their privacy? Because I would have appreciated the privacy at the time. Um, But, you know, it went the way it went. And now it's around National Hot Dog Day. I get a great memory. Yo, so you're calling games on Fox. Correct. You're doing a great job as a color analyst. What do you do when you go to teams, complexes, and talk to 
of folks as far as the production meetings are concerned yep. because you used to be the guy every week that they'd be <laughs> asking to talk to talk about uh pulling back the curtain and seeing everything that goes into it and remembering how much i used to hate those meetings hate them because Would you they give just up anything no you don't i mean you don't say anything right there's nothing you just kind of like do the song and dance and then if there's any guys who you know or or guys or gals whether it's um you know, sideline reporter or people in the booth or whoever who you like know, like when Gruden comes to town, like he'll, he'll kind of jam you up. Like, Hey, I've been seeing this play. You guys have been running. Tell me a little bit about this uh, fake trap to Sean green and throw a little sting route to Braylon <laughs> Edwards right off the ear of that. Will linebacker, man. I like that route, <laughs> you know, and he give you that eye and you're just kind of like, well, shoot, I got to tell him something, you right. know, and, and you got to be able to trust those people. And so, the most important thing is having a relationship with people prior. If you're going in cold, it's just like a cold call with sales. Like, hey, you guys want some office space? We got 2,500 square feet. Like people are generally going to say no. You're going to get a lot more no's than yeses. But when you have relationships with, it doesn't matter if it's trainers or players or coaches or whoever, it just helps build a bridge to that player. And that's all you're trying to do. And remind them that number one, no matter what you say, I would never say publicly without like an okay from you. Right. You know what I mean? Cause I don't want to, I want to do this for a while. I don't want to be the guy who just goes spewing information and whatever. So some stuff you'll check with the coach. Like, are you cool if we explain that story? And a lot of times the coaches or players will say, you know, I'd rather keep that close to the vest or, Hey, um, ask me tomorrow on the field and I'll let you know if I'm comfortable with that or whatever. Um, but it's, you know, when you go into, you know, talk to a player you've, you've never talked to before and right. they're younger and they didn't watch the Jets in 2010. Like, Will you tell them These that? guys don't care. Like, seriously. Because <laughs> what am I going to say? Give them my resume? No, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> I'm Mark Sanchez. Yeah, you haven't played with the Yeah, Jets. like, a lot of guys will know, but some guys are just completely oblivious. And I don't blame, like, they don't need to know. I don't, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. But you're just... Like, okay, wh where's my in with this player? How do I build a bridge with this player in these... 12 minutes we have together right it's nearly impossible but you do your best with the relationships you have and hopefully you can a lot of times you know what really helps is when you say something the same way gruden did to me and this is probably why i've done it subconsciously but when you identify something that they've done well and you can tell they worked on it it's a specific pass rush it's a specific move and you can identify it by name right the players will immediately respect you because they know you're watching and they know you're not just surface level treetop BS. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this guy's really watching the tape. Damn, I worked on that move quite a bit this offseason. Right. Now I got a lot to say about this move. You know where I got this move? I got this from my high school coach. And we worked, you know, in Boca Raton, Florida this offseason. Da, da, da. And now you get a cool story, whether it's for me, Kevin Kugler, Laura Oakman, like whoever explains the story. You just want to get the information and hopefully they're comfortable with it. And then you know how it works. You've been in the media game forever. Story sell. You know, the, the yes, no questions, the black and white said, blah, blah, blah. It, it, it doesn't work. You want the color analyst stuff. And so that's kind of what you're digging for with a level of respect, right? You don't want to intrude on their privacy. Up in the booth, how do you balance being technical mm -hmm. and taking people inside versus, okay, Right. Maybe there are people out there that I'm talking to who aren't <laughs> so much into the Correct. X's and O's of right. the game. Like there are the hardcore guys who are like right. Sanchez, you better tell me exactly what's happening exactly. on this protection. Right. And so there's a fine line of getting very technical and in the weeds, right? Going right. very insider. But you can't be there too long because you're also talking to the soccer mom. You're right. talking to uh, you know, the guy who or gal who lives in their parents' basement and has all the answers, you know, like you got to talk to them as well. You got to talk to the young kids, um, you know, talk to a wide range of personalities and opinions. And so I do my best to weave in and out of some of those things. And if you'll notice a lot of times on our broadcast, you won't see a ton of all 22. Okay. Yeah. For a reason, because a lot of people haven't seen that. When you see that, it's like seeing like, um, I don't, maybe not like a police body cam, but like some sort of weird camera angle that just kind of catches you off guard. Little jarring. Yeah. And you're, you're like, whoa, how do I even identify who's who in the zoo here? Like, this is crazy. What is this satellite photo of this game? You right. know what I mean? So we do it every once in a while when we're coming out of a break. You'll notice. 
coming out of a break, I have a chance to explain. And you don't want to explain too much because if you're explaining, you're losing. Almost like a debate, right? I got to explain myself. I'm getting my butt kicked. Right. So there's like fine points in or specific points rather in a broadcast that you can really dive deep right out of commercial when you know the football people are locked in wanting to see that play and want a reason for that play working, not working, the interception, the touchdown, what set up the big play. Boom. Mark, go ahead, be Mark like you're in the quarterback room in 2010 and tell me why right. that worked. The rest of it is a lot of in and out, a little bit of predicting, a little bit of, you know, diagnosing formations and personnels and kind of narrowing down what the offense or defense might do in a situation. And then the other part is make the audience the quarterback. Pull the curtain back, mm. sit them next to you at a bar stool, at a beer, at a beer hall or a pub or something, and explain the game. Right. Hey man, this is a two-minute drill. You know what the most important thing in a two-minute drill is? The first play. Get a positive play on first down. That's huge. Huge. Little things like four minute offense. You got the you got the game in the bag. Game's basically over. You got to milk the clock and run this thing out. Running backs, two hands on the football. Avoid bouncing the ball outside because you get closer to the sidelines and it stops the clock. Now, my only caveat to that is if you can get a first down, but you have to go out of bounds, you're going to get me four more downs to waste clock. I'll let you go out of bounds. That's the one asterisk to never go out of bounds in four minutes. Stuff like that, that people want to know and they pick things up like that. And they're like, oh, that was cool. So I hope my only hope is you try and please everybody. It's nearly impossible, right? Tom Moore actually taught me this. Jesus Christ couldn't even please 12 people, right? And he's arguably the greatest guy <laughs> to ever live, right? So you can't please everybody, but I'd like him to walk away with a little bit more football knowledge right? and to laugh a little bit, whether it's at my expense or somebody's expense, all in good fun, and, and to have a genuinely entertaining experience watching a football game, a game that I love. How much do you genuinely enjoy doing that? You know, it's it, funny. Somebody asked me that right now, and... I don't think I fell in love with it till this past year. Really? Till my second year. The first year, I genuinely felt like I was treading water. I was really nervous. I was scared to misdiagnose a play. I was scared to pronounce a name wrong. Um, and there was there's a lot of nerves in there because you feel like you have to be this expert. Right. You have to be like perfect in there and call it perfect. And it's so not true. And once you start watching the game, it kind of unfolds for you. And if you put in the prep... You shouldn't be nervous. You should be anxious and want the thing to happen, just like when you were playing. I can't wait for kickoff, not because I'm scared, but because I want this dang thing to be over. I've been studying my butt off for a few days now. Like, let's let's go play this thing right. and win it and get out of there. So that's kind of how I started to feel really after um, those two London games last year. I thought Kevin and I and Laura as well really got into a groove. And when you're in a good back and forth dance with your partner and he's explaining you know, the who and the what, and I'm explaining the why and the how, and you can kind of get in and out in between plays. You feel like you're in a group. It's just like playing ball. It's just like, dang, we converted like six third downs in right. a row. We are rolling. boys. Yeah. like, let's keep it going. Keep dialing them up, you know? And so um, that's when it gets really fun. But I, I think after last year, I really, really started to enjoy it more. Jets fans, we're in our final push and the clock is ticking. WinBet is giving you a golden opportunity to win VIP prizes for the 2023 season. The WinBet Green Room is the most exclusive space at the stadium with all-inclusive food and beverage, lower level seats, and appearances by Jets legends and celebrities. New Jersey customers, all you need to do is wager at least $100 on WinBet Sportsbook or Casino. For New York customers, all you need to do is wager at least $100 on WinBet's sportsbook. The best part? You get an entry for every $100 you wager. You're recently married. And yes, that sir. That took place in Mexico, correct? New hardware. Congratulations. New hardware. All right. Uh, how has it been the first a few months? And uh, do you have any funny, if fun need, stories from the wedding? <laughs> fun stories from the wedding. Yeah. Because uh, uh, we're going to get to the chat. Only Jets. because Nick Mangold's not yes. here. Uh, I have a good story from the wedding, but if anybody needs any marriage advice, I'm, you know, two months in, I got all the answers. So just let me know, hit me up on uh, Instagram or, Twitter right. or whatever. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. We're figuring it out just like everybody else, but uh, I'm very lucky, very fortunate, very blessed. And Perry planned a hell of a wedding. I'm just glad she invited me. <laughs> so that's kind of my line now because it was, it was incredible. But uh, at one I point, I like the black and white photos. They're cool. Yeah. They're really pretty. That's all her too. I mean, she did the whole thing. Yeah. She, she every detail she nailed it and uh, i was really proud of her so um she's great but uh so nick <laughs> <laughs> 
Nick Mangold is at the wedding. My oldest brother is also named Nick. Mm -hmm. Before, um, so Perry did her dance with her dad. I did my dance with my mom. And then um, there was like this little lag time and uh, Etta James, At Last, the song came on. And it, I know that it's my brother's wedding song. That's like his song with his wife, Paula. So I started screaming across the thing. There was like 200 plus people at this deal. And I'm screaming over the music, Nick, Nick, you know, Nick, come here. <laughs> and so Nick, my brother and my sister-in-law, his wife, Paula, they go up and have their dance. And it wasn't planned, but I was like, dude, just jump in. Like, let's roll. This is your guys' song. Like nobody else is on the dance floor. Enjoy this because you guys are coming up on like 20 years together. So this is really cool. And that was my senior year of high school or whatever. So... <laughs> So Mangold comes running up to the dance floor. He's like, what's up, babe? What can I do? What can I in total Mangold fashion? Like, what do you need, babe? Because he's the best of all yeah. time, you oh, know? Yeah. At times like a golden retriever, like just like so loyal and so awesome. And same kind of hair as a golden retriever, which is nice, except for the shedding. <laughs> but he runs up and is like, What do you need? What do you need? And I was like, What are you doing here? Like, not that why are you at the wedding, but right. like, why are you on the dance floor? This is for Nick. And he goes, I'm Nick. And I'm like, You are Nick. Oh, Nick. Got it. Uh, and then he had the ex exit <laughs> had stage to walk left. away, just, uh, uh, just tail between the legs. In background. Just into the abyss. All right, let's talk Jets. Got a new quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> so what did you think about what you saw today and when everybody in the building wasn't coming up to you and talking to you, so it's probably hard to take in. No, I, got, I got practice. To yeah, what did you see? I thought one of the best throws I've seen in a while – and it's no surprise it's coming from him, was that ball down the middle in two minutes towards the end of the day. Randall Cobb. Holy smokes. Yeah. And I mean, it makes total sense because they've done it for so long and he makes it look effortless. But that is like, I can't wait for the coaches to watch it on tape with the players and see the younger players like, that's it. Because that's what you're searching for in training camp, right? You're trying to find your identity. You're trying to, you know, see who can make it, who can play man coverage, who can block, who can hit, who can tackle, who can run, who can catch. But you also want to get good tape on film. And Coach Sala says this, the silent tape. Hmm. When you watch it, who are you? And you want to be able to put together some teach tape, meaning the tape that you're going to use later on in the season to install plays. Hey, remember way back in August when we ran this play in two minutes? We're thinking about activating this one again. Here's what it's supposed to look like. And that's the curriculum for that play. And that's cool to watch because the guy's been doing it for almost 20 years. He's been doing it for almost a decade with Randall Cobb. Like it makes so much sense. And then you see the young guys like, okay, I got it. That's the blueprint. Do you the, want the guys who are studs already that are coming into their own, like Garrett Wilson? Okay, that's it. Right. Got it. I'm I want to do that next. You know what I mean? Like it's my turn now. Boom, let's do it. And that's that creates the camaraderie. That creates the relationship you want between quarterback and receiver. That's That just puts it on display for the whole team. And if Aaron is accountable that way, the whole team is on notice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's amazing. How but, do you uh, like the way he handles himself out there on the field? He's very – like I know him pretty well, right, from growing up and uh, interacting with some uh, great uh, investment ventures in RX3. Um, but – He's he's a relational guy. He's not like a ton of surface level type guy. You know what I mean? He's not like a small talk kind of guy. He will be if he has to, but like he's much deeper than that. He wants to know why. He has questions about things. And um, to some people, he can be polarizing. I'll tell you what, the best thing that's maybe happened to him for his career and post-career, uh, if he ever ages because he looks amazing, is – Hard knocks because it humanizes him and shows who he really is Interesting. because he has this. And we talked about it before practice, but how do you be his teammate and also a fan of his? You know what I mean? Those are two different forces kind of colliding. It has to be intimidating for a and younger it's so player. intimidating for those young guys. So what does he do? He drops his guard and brings him in, puts right. his arm around you, says congratulates you on something or praises you for something like these guys run around. In some ways, you're like a little bit of a puppy. Like you just want a little praise. You know, some guys need to be patted on the butt a little bit. Some guys need to be kicked in the ass a little bit, you know, and he's out there playing quarterback, coach, psychologist to try and build bridges with all these new players who he knows are going to help him play well and the team win. So it's he's doing a masterful job and um, 
it's, I mean, it's a great case study on being the quarterback and all the hats you have to wear or you're, you choose to wear by signing up for that position. And there's arguably nobody better. I mean, he's unbelievable. Talent wise. I mean, it's, it's some thrower of the football until Mahomes came along. Like nobody touched this guy. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you appreciate most of what he's already accomplished during his career? 18 year run there in green Bay. I mean, the longevity, number one, the, um, the health, yep. the way he's been able to take care of his body, the youthfulness and joy you can see he gets. I mean, clearly he's on the back nine of his career, right? It's not like he's got 20 more years in him, but he's appreciating all the little things um, that a lot of young guys take for granted, you know, that you just assume this is going to keep going and it doesn't always keep going. And so when you watch a guy like that, really lean in to the young guys and remind them, you know, the little details, the nuances, they're going over play fakes last night and which is a run, which is a pass. Well, that like, was cool. That's that's like gold for Zach and Boyle. And like that is that is training camp. That there in a capsule, in a vacuum, is training camp. The things you're gonna miss most. Remember that time we were bagging on Aaron for his fakes and da-da? they're gonna be talking about that till they're 50. Like that's such a cool experience for them. So I'm um, I'm proud of him. I think he's uh, he's a stud. And listen, it's <laughs> I I see it both ways, right? I see this thing starting off like amazing, and like four and two, five and one, and then you look at the schedule too. You're like, dang, there's some some good ball clubs in there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, ah, where are they going to be at the break? You know? And so I'm very curious to see how things pan out. But I mean, with that guy, you always got a chance. He, that, he, that's the bottom line, and everybody feels that, right? Like yeah. no matter what. We're going to give eight the ball? Yeah, I like our chances. Let's roll. How do you describe that personality? You talked about attentionality, like how he's above surface-level conversations. He comes across as a very confident person. Oh, yeah. But also, at the same time, he's super intelligent. But also, you combine all that with all his physical prowess, he's still humble. Totally humble. He really is. And I think that's... What's so great about the show is it's humanizing him and showing his real personality, joking around with the players, uh, joking around about himself, being self-deprecating. Like, that's Aaron. And uh, I'm glad people get to see that. I'm glad that it's really shown up. I think um, it's good for the other players to see that, yes, you're this guy, but you're also one of the guys. You know what I mean? And you walk in the room, head and shoulders above everybody, you know, okay, that's our guy. No doubt about it. But he's also one of the guys. And there's a unique art to that. And it is not easy because you're you're the guy and one of the guys. It's, it's a lot going on there. So. How, how quick can this come together? It, it, because Shoot, When's it, September 10th? <laughs> 11th? But you, They're Monday night, right? It, and also, what is he entering as far as what are the, the 20th? Well, shoot. I mean, <laughs> you said it right there. I said the 10th because our first game is uh, Rams at Seahawks. Yeah, right. You'll be on the West Coast. But they're going to be yes, Monday night. Monday night football. Hey, welcome to New York, man. Yeah. Hard Knocks, Monday night football game one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, and it's so New York. It's yeah. so the way it should go, but it's just a reminder, like, okay, here we go, babe. But Have you ever taken in any theater with him? He's, no, but we need to because I know he's been, uh, he's seen a bunch of shows. Yeah. I got to see a couple more. Us- every off season, I usually try and get four or five in. So yeah. I got to hustle. I, remember. I was on honeymoon, dude. I know. It ruined remi- everything. Yeah, remember the headline? Uh, uh, when you were drafted, I said, from Hollywood to Broadway. To here Broadway, comes Mark yeah. Sanchez. Oh, boy. But from Green Bay to Broadway. I mean, Chico, it's both small town. Yeah. Like, that's so curious about his thoughts. And I know he's taken in a lot of what the city has to offer, and I'm happy he has. Like, right. once again, he gets it. He's on year 18, 19. Like, he knows that that time in the offseason is valuable. It's not like, you can't be seen out because you're the young quarterback and you just need to be in this cave studying your playbook. One, that's not realistic. And two, he's above all that. Like he's, you know what I mean? He's he's doing it just right. All right, we got to let you roll. You're all, always gracious with your time. Uh, let's end here. We've talked a lot about Rodgers. What do you make of the landscape of the AFC when you talk about Josh Allen's inside this division? You mm-hmm. mentioned Patrick Mahomes before. You got Joe Burrow. You got Justin Herbert. The list goes on. Mm-hmm. 
as far as uh, you, you can talk about the young quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence, you got Deshaun Watson. Yep. And I see stack now. It's and, bottleneck. What, what do you think? <laughs> it really about, is. What do you think of the quarterback um, position? Well, I think the best thing that Rodgers has to offer is his experience. Yep. And the only one with even close to that, probably, I'd say, is is Mahomes. Right. Because he's been there twice now. Right. Been there three times, won two of them uh, with Super Bowls. So that's a guy who knows what it feels like, tastes like, smells like, looks like. Like that guy gets it. So does Aaron. I'd argue that those two are the most experienced in the conference. But the biggest thing too, and we've had two case studies on it in the last three or so years, but when Brady went to Tampa Bay and re-energized that sleeping giant and that defense and the skill positions they had, sounds familiar. Yeah. Same thing with Matt Stafford going to LA, that defense, the skill positions they had. I'm just saying it's a very similar blueprint Plus, you just signed Dalvin Cook. I mean, that's going to be problems for defenses with those two backs in the backfield between Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook. That's going to be that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a matchup nightmare for a lot of teams, and you're going to get a 19-year vet back there calling the plays and and dialing up. Okay, what do we want to do versus this specific package? I like it. I like my shot there. I know there's a lot of young studs and young guns in the AFC, but experience at the end of the day with the way he's throwing it still. That's uh, that's pretty scary. Great seeing you, brother. Great to see you as well.